Hey, g'day, it's Prezo here and I'm running a tutorial today on doing a process called edge banding. Now, uh, this is a clock project that I'm working on and this is just a raw MDF edge on a carcass that I want to be able to cover up with an oak veneer. So this is the veneer that we'll be using and I've added the same veneer to the outside of this clock. But the edge banding process will allow us to cover up that raw edge there. It will also follow the edge of the carcass but always with the grain of the veneer at right angles. So along this bottom edge for example we're going to glue the veneer down like that with the grain running at right angles to that long edge. And we'll do the same up the short edge here. It'll be running at right angles the whole time. Now the interesting part about this edge banding process is that when we get to this section here which has the curve, the grain of the veneer is going to be running at right angles when we get to that point and then we're going to start to do the grain as a sort of a radial pattern as we go around that curve. And this edge banding process was really common on Victorian furniture, still used on furniture today and it's a, it's a bit of an illusion really. Uh, it appears as if the wood has just naturally formed around that curve but of course it's not, it's been cut and joined. So that's going to be the challenge is to get this very tight radius and uh, make the grain appear like it's radial as it goes around. So the first step in this edge banding process is to cut a series of strips from uh, the veneer. Now I've got two layers of veneer here and I'm going to cut my strips at around about 25 millimeters wide. That's wider than what I need, but there's a reason for doing this. And I want them to be more or less parallel, but it doesn't have to be perfect. And you want to cut enough strips to go around the perimeter of the thing that you're edge banding plus extra for waste. All right, that's probably not enough, but I can come back and do some more later. And that's gonna go along that bottom edge of the clock there. So what I need to do here is cut a 45 degree mitre at both ends and it's got to match the 45 degree mitre in the carcass. There's a couple of ways of doing this. The method I'm going to use relies on cutting the mitre close to the correct length and then sliding it in and out until it matches perfectly. So there's our setup, and I've got the veneer pushed in hard against the, the face of the mitre square, the stock that is. And we're just going to slice through. You can see that score mark there. It's going to finish that off with a steel rule. And you can put the tip of the blade into the score mark that you've already made, slide the rule up to it, and then pivot the rule until it lines up with the score mark. Okay, there's our mitre. Okay, now we're going to put our mitre back in place, but I've got the tape on the bottom side. And I'm lining that up with the existing mitre and I've got roughly half the way sticking out either side of the carcass and then down this end we're going to mark roughly where that mitre needs to go so I'm putting my steel rule across the extended mitre line and just eyeballing roughly where that mitre needs to go and I'll mark that with a pencil. And I don't know if you can see once again, but that pencil line wasn't accurate, but this cut should be. So here are our two mitre lines on the carcass, and when we put our piece of veneer back in place, what we do is we line up the veneer with the mitres. Now, if our mitres were too close together, we slide the veneer in, if the two mitres we cut on the veneer were too far apart, we slide the veneer out. And because of the taper on the two mitres, we can match it up with the existing carcass. Now, 
that's why I cut my veneer much wider than what I wanted it to give me that little bit of wriggle room to adjust everything when we finished. All I need to do now is take one of my other short pieces of veneer, cut a mitre at one end and then just butt it together. This end up here, we're going to cut that later, we're going to match it all up with the rest of the veneer at a later point. Okay, so same thing again, just bring the veneer up to the edge of the cutting mat, get it aligned as close as you can, put your mitre square in place there and just slice off that edge. Sort of work around the camera there. And this is the, the weakness with this uh, process here. That sharp corner there is always prone to break off. And uh, that's once again why we cut our veneer wider than what we wanted it. So line it up again, get your mitre overlapping, take the piece we just cut, slide it up, and then tape that together. All right, so we do the same thing at the other end. All right, I'm still holding that in place now. The other mitre is matching up, and this is the piece we just cut. And you're looking at that and saying, hang on, what went wrong there? No, <laughs> I deliberately did that, is what I've got to do is turn that over now. Once again, what we're trying to do is get the sharp edge on top all the time. And you can sort of tell the difference. If you do it inside out and you put it together, you always see a gap. So now we've got our three pieces of veneer with our mitres in the corners. The only difficult thing later on is when we've got to glue this on, we've got to make sure that we've aligned this correctly. So just by carefully lifting that piece away and looking underneath and aligning that with the mitre and doing the same at the other end, I've got this now sitting where I want it to be. I'm going to put my steel rule across the top of the carcass and I'm going to cut the excess veneer off. So I've just marked across the edge of the rule there. I'll put this on the cutting mat and we'll cut that off. What I'm going to do is I'll cut a little bit long, just a couple of millimetres, and then I'll turn it over and cut it from the other side. So just flip that over now, and this is the side we should always be cutting from, the inside. I'll just take off an extra millimetre or two. That's going to go roughly there and then later on we need to you know, just take those radial pieces around that curved part and then across the top here. So here we are with the strip of veneer as we have it at this point ready to glue on to the, the back side of the clock. Now remember the challenge is to get these two mitres to match up as closely as we can with the mitres in the carcass. More importantly though, what we really want is for this corner, this vertical edge, to be aligned exactly with the mitre at the outside. Now one way of doing that is to just invert everything and put the carcass back in place over the top. And then look carefully to see where the mitre is. So if you extend that mitre line, And normally I would do this the other way around. I'd have uh, the veneer on top and then I'd put a plate over the top of that and clamp everything down. Just to make it a little bit easier to get these mitres to match up, I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. I reckon that's good. I'm just going to protect the top of my clock with a piece of MDF. And we've got a clamp board on top of that and clamp it down. Okay, we'll give that 40 minutes. Alright, let's get this excess trimmed off and see how it looks on the mitres.
Of course, trimming off this inside edge is not quite so easy because you can't get the knife at the back of the veneer. So the best you can do is to sort of use your shearing action with the blade. And just push it close to that edge and then gradually come back to the inside face of that carcass. And the more brittle your veneer is, the, the more careful you have to be. You need to have a really sharp knife. When you are sanding these raw edges, it's really important that you only sand onto the face of the carcass and don't drag the sanding block back again. If there's any loose grain there, it's just going to rip that off and tear it. Now this corner down here uh, is the one that's most prone to damage and I put a drop of cyanoacrylate glue there just to bond all of that corner together. It's very brittle, very prone to breakage. And having to sand with the grain also makes it more complicated. Uh, you know, it'd be nice if you just dragged the sanding block left and right, but you can't. So just push the sanding block onto the, the face of the carcass, and it'll all come up looking neat and tidy. Well, I'm using 240 grit abrasive paper there and let's have a close-up look at that mitre. Well, <laughs> we've done surprisingly well. Inside corner is exactly right, outside corner exactly right. And that matches up with the underlying mitre on the carcass itself. Uh, other corner, not too bad. I think I lost a little tiny bit of veneer there right on that very corner. You can repair that, you just simply cut in with a knife, uh, make up a matching piece of veneer, slide it in and glue it down. Probably using a cyanoacrylate glue would be the best option there. But uh, I think I'm just going to use a little bit of wood filler there just to repair that. Okay, now this is the really fun part, it's making up the radial uh, mitered pieces that go around that corner. But it's surprisingly less trauma than doing the, the mitre at the other end. So what we'll do, I've got a broken piece there as you can see. I'm just going to get my knife, I'm going to put that directly down over the veneer and just plunge the knife blade in and remove that to give us a nice clean edge to work to. The trick to making up this edge banding that goes around this radial curve here is to first of all just estimate roughly what shaped pieces you need to cut and roughly how many. And what we want to try to do is to make some wedge shaped pieces and I'm sort of thinking like three or maybe four to go around that edge. And you have to imagine these, you know, sort of pie-shaped sections meeting at what would be the centre of that radius around the outside of the carcass. Doesn't have to be perfect. So our pieces are going to start here, they're going to finish here, and we're going to need roughly four of them, and they need to be, you know, roughly that shape. This oak veneer can be a little bit tricky to cut. Let's try that one. So turn it over. Let's flip then. That's better. 
So there's our first piece. Now let's go and do these all in one hit. So I've got second one there. Now all of those need to be flipped over before we add them on. So this was our first one, it goes there. Take another one, doesn't matter which one really, that just flipped over. We get that, another one. I'll use that one to finish. Yeah, that's all gonna fall off there. <laughs> all right, okay, I did that off camera because it was just tedious and fiddly. But I ended up using more than four pieces. I think I made five. If I turn that over and put it in place, that gives you an idea of what it's gonna look like when it's done. So it creates the illusion that the grain of the wood is just following the profile or the perimeter of whatever you're putting it on. It doesn't matter whether that's like an elliptical table edge or a round tray or a rectangular product um, or you've got a serpentine edge even. You can make the edge banding appear to be following that. If you look really closely, you can see the joint lines between them, but step back a bit and you're not going to notice it. So here's my first piece, I'm butting it up against the, the cut edge on the, the piece that's already been glued down. And we're just going to tape that together temporarily. So what we need to do now is make a piece to fill in between. Now, um, I'm just going to do that by taking some strips of veneer. I'm going to put one underneath this corner here, put one underneath the other corner, tape those down, and then we're going to cut through in three places. We're going to cut through at the end of the first radial corner, the end of the second radial corner, and in the center. And then those pieces will butt together perfectly. slide it underneath okay what we're going to do now is we're going to make a cut right in the center just well not right in the center where it overlaps so I'm just going to put my rule there now unfortunately this is going to be an exception to that rule about flipping the piece over when you're done uh, it's just not quite as easy to do it here. So there's our top piece cut through. There's our bottom piece cut through. So take the bottom piece out, get rid of the top piece here, and then tape that joint together. Okay, now we do the same here. We're going to cut it at both ends right through uh, to the piece underneath. Now you can take a bit off the radial corner if you want to. In fact, it's probably safer to do that. You can sort of see where the, the tape finishes, just where my fingernail is. Now, if you're really careful, you probably get that through and get it accurate, but I'm actually just going to 
take a bit off both pieces. Lift that up, get the little waste piece out from underneath and then put that back together again and tape that one down. Okay, same here. And there's the waste piece off the bottom. Tape that one together. Well, there's the piece taken off now, and what we have to do is get that back on again. So we're going to wet that raw edge of the MDF with glue, carefully register the two cut ends with the existing cuts that are already there, get it all clamped down. I'm just sort of doing that by feel at that end and sort of slid it in until it stopped moving so I know it's butted together properly. This end I can see quite clearly. All right, let's get it clamped. Okay, pilgrims, uh, let's see what we got. All right, <laughs> looks a bit rough and ready, doesn't it? But let's get this trimmed off and sand it and you'll change your mind. Well, there's a fairly good close-up of our edge-banded corner and this was always going to be a challenge to do, to do this one because of the very tight radius we have around the edge of that carcass and in order to get that looking like the grain is always at right angles to the edge would mean either using lots and lots of very small pieces or taking the compromise and fitting about four around that, that radial arc. But the overall result is flat and smooth and I can't see any gaps in there so I'm happy with that. Well there it is with the back on temporarily. This will eventually have wood screws to hold it all together. And you're going to see between 6 and 8 millimeters of that back edge of the carcass. So the overall effect is we've got oak on the outside of the carcass, the edge and the back. This has already had a coat of sanding sealer. The carcass of the clock itself needs to have the same. But that's the end of my tutorial on edge banding and uh, in uh, what I'll do next is get back onto the actual clock build. So if you tune in for that you'll see this clock starting to go together and hopefully we'll show you the, the finished result. So I'm going to wind up here, I'm going to show you some nice sexy close ups of what that looks like and uh, I'll see you on the next episode of the Vixie clock build. Okay, thanks for watching.